What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Celta Vigo in La Liga, yet another match coming our way before the October international break, we're playing every other day now at this point, but again we do return to action in La Liga against a very good side in Celta Vigo who have done very well against us over the past few years, and again we are still training Real Madrid in the league, and this is a must win game to keep up with the pace at the top of La Liga. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 6.30 p.m. local time. So we do have the early kickoff tomorrow in La Liga. And this match will be taking place at the Estadio Olympic Luis Campos Stadium in Montjuic, which of course is the home stadium for Barcelona this season. And the referee for this match has also been confirmed. On the pitch, it will be Mario Lopez. And on the VR, it will be Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona currently sit in 2nd place in La Liga on 13 points. After playing 5 matches, we have 4 wins and 1 draw, the exact same record as 3rd place Girona and we're only ahead of them by 2 goal difference. Of course, that 5-0 against Betis did help a lot. Top of the table Real Madrid is on 15 points. After 5 matches, they are 5 out of 5 wins. Was really hoping they were going to draw points against Sociedad. The Sociedad did go 1-0 up at the Bernabeu, but Madrid did make the comeback. Sociedad that defense were absolutely shocking. Nonetheless, two points behind. Um, Barcelona still keeping up with the pace. Again, we still have to play Real Madrid twice, so you could say it's still in our hands. If we win all of our games, we will win the league, but the same goes for Real Madrid as well. So it's still quite tight. Two points only separate us, and again, Girona are right behind us as well with the same record as we do. But the biggest game, of course, in La Liga this weekend, which hopefully will benefit Barcelona, it is the Madrid derby. Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid tomorrow, or not tomorrow, tomorrow, on Sunday at the Wanda Metropolitano. Let's hope for something good. I am very, very confident that Real Madrid will win, and I'll tell you why. Because Atletico Madrid always, always ball it. I think Real Madrid have won every single Madrid derby like in the past four or five years. I don't even remember Atletico Madrid getting a draw. But... They're at the Wanda. Let's hope for something. Again, a draw would be fantastic. Again, Barcelona do play tomorrow. And of course, Madrid Derby is the day after tomorrow. So they will know the result of the Barcelona game going in that match that hopefully will help them psychologically for Barcelona. But again, we'll wait and see. But to be honest, I don't have high hopes for it whatsoever. But the fact that it's away at the Wanda, there's a smidge of little hope from myself. But again, if they drop points, we beat Santa Vigo. You never know, we could definitely end this uh, La Liga match uh, week, uh, match weekend at top of the table. And so could, I don't know, to be honest, if they go out and win a team 4-5-0 and only win 2-0, <laughs> they'll be ahead of us. So, table still bouncing around a little bit, but again, Barcelona and Madrid keeping up with pace with each other. But now it's a big moment if Real Madrid end up winning that Madrid derby. That way, we'll have to wait probably till the end of October, to the Clasico, for the league table to change. Now, if you take a look at our opponents in Celta Vigo and where they're currently standing in the league table, they are currently sat in 16th place in La Liga on four points. After playing five matches, they do only have one win, one draw, and three losses. Not the best start for them. Again, they are lingering to where their level is currently, but again, they're only one point off the relegation zone. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Celta Vigo. Like I just mentioned so far in the lead, they're currently one point off the relegation zone. But again, they're a very historic side that has beaten Barcelona on countless occasions in the past 10 years. They've been our bogey team for quite some time now, especially the trip away to Celta Vigo. But at home, we usually do get the job done. The last time we did face them was the final match of last season where Barcelona did lose. 2-1. Keep in mind, of course, final game of the season. We've already won the league. Absolutely nothing to fight for. And Celta Vigo were fighting for their lives to stay in the lead. They needed to win the match to not get relegated. And they have done so. We could have gotten them relegated, which would have been nice. But in the end, the players were just on the beach. And, I mean, can I blame them? Yes, but... In retrospect, I understand. I think we've lost our final game of the season the past two seasons. We lost 2-1 to Celta Vigo. Then I think 2-0 to Villarreal. It is what it is. I think, of course, Barcelona are the better side, but Celta Vigo, they just need the win so badly. When you're fighting for your life and when you're on the beach, 
it's, it can be a roller coaster of a game. They can see the lineup again 4 3 3. We had Eric Garcia in the pivot, Franck Cassier, of course, on the right hand side. And apart from that, everyone else in the lineup is still at Barcelona. Now, if you take a look at some of the Vigos, last six matches in all competition. In the last match, they did lose to Mallorca 1 0 at home. Big, big loss there. They did beat Almeria 3 2. They lost to Real Madrid 1 0. They drew 1 1 with Celta Vigo. They lost 2 0 to Osasuna. And they won some uh, friendly game for preseason 3 0. So, again, they faced Osasuna, Sociedad, Madrid, Almeria, and Mallorca. And they've only managed one win. So, that pretty much says enough about their levels. Let's take a look at the last three matches, all competition. Firstly, is the 1 0 loss to Real Madrid. Now, I did watch this match, and they were. Kind of competing a little bit with Madrid, but in the end, I believe it was Jude Bellingham, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Jude Bellingham. It was like, I think, uh, near the end of the game. It was a very tight game. South of Vigo didn't miss a lot of chances, but Real Madrid had their sniffs here and there. In the end, they were more clinical, and they got luck on their side. I think South of Vigo definitely could have gotten a draw from this match, but in the end, they walk away with, I think, in my opinion, an undeserved three points from Real Madrid. Well, I guess they earned it, so it is deserved, but I feel like a fair result would have been a draw. Next up is their 3-2 win against El Maria. Again, their only win of the season, and it did come away from home. Again, Sociedad, not Sociedad, again, Celta Vigo do line up in the 5-3-2 formation, or 3-5-2, however you uh, want to interpret it. Again, this match, they were very, very dominant. Their goals came early, but again, the league goals at the back, so that's something to look out for, for sure. But in the end, they walk away with three crucial points, and again, the three first crucial points of the season. And the final match, of course, was the Mallorca match, but they did lose 1-0 at home. I believe uh, Mrokic, the striker for Mallorca, scored like in the 80th minute, something like that. Again, a very, very tight game. Iago Aspas getting a 9.0 essentially rating and not scoring a goal. I mean, it was a very, very, very even matchup. I did watch the extended highlights for this very, very even matchup, I must say. It was, again, the two teams at the same level going toe to I think Mallorca on paper are a bit better. But in the end, they walk away with a crucial win, Mallorca, and Celta Vigo are left, you know, winless. And it's a very tough result for them, especially, you know, not doing well at home this season. That's now back-to-back -back losses at home at 1-0 as well. In the end, though, I think they did compete for the majority of the match, but luck just wasn't on their side. So overall, final thoughts on Celta Vigo. I think they're very well-structured and good side in La Liga, but luck and, you know, results and, you know, opponents haven't really gone their way so far this year. They're very well coached by their manager, who's a very historic manager in the game of football, Rafa Benitez. The last time he played against Barcelona, we battered him for another Bernabeu, so hopefully we can do the same again. Again, Rafa Benitez, very, very good manager, very, very experienced. He's won the La Liga title before, he's won the Champions League, he's done it in multiple places. He's a very, very good manager. In the end, I think his... Um, tactical sense about adapting to Celta Vigo to the 5-3-2 that's similar to what he did with Newcastle when he brought them up from relegation as well again very very good manager in terms of players to look out for for Celta Vigo there is quite a few of course uh, you know R9 uh, the, <laughs> the Spanish R9 Aspas hasn't scored this season not be a surprise whatsoever his first goal of the year a season comes from uh, comes to Barcelona they do have uh, Jonathan Bamba one of their new signings a very very good uh, winger of course Oscar Mangueta former Barcelona player Carlos Perez former Barcelona player as well they both talked about scoring against Barcelona in the media over the past few days and if they would celebrate or not Mingueza said he wouldn't but Carlos Perez said he would of course they had their good defense and they have a good goalkeeper in Marchin I don't know if he's available or if he's injured but again good players you can see there from the uh, player ratings <laughs> on FIFA with their cards of how this side is you got a lot of gold players got your couple of silvers again very very good team experience young talent they did of course lose Ga uh, Gabriel uh, uh, Vesga to Saudi Arabia yeah, that's of course a big blow for them in the end the side is good well coached it's going to be a difficult game for Barcelona especially they're going to line up with the 5-3-2 so Barcelona had to keep it very compact at the back control the possession in the midfield and again the chances don't come uh, too often against El Vigo again 1-0 loss only another 1-0 loss the score conceded twice but that was away from home as well so the chances don't really come against El Vigo you have got to be clinical Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list for this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows. So Stegen, Cancelo, Balde, Arujo, Martinez, Gavi, Ferran Lewandowski, Rafinha, Peña, Felix, Christensen, Alonso, Romeo, Roberto, De Jong, Gundogan, Kunde, Astralaga, Lemanyemal, and Fermin, 
Lopez. So everyone is fully fit apart from Pedri Porter. And that does mean that Arujo this morning did receive the medical clearance. The green light has come to the Uruguay and he's now fully fit and ready to play for Barcelona. Again, he was fit to play midweek against Royal Antwerp, but the club decided to give him an extra couple days to recover. And now he is fully fit and ready to go. So again, look at the squad. It is absolutely elite. Just a few areas just need to be improved and we're a top, top side. And again, Pedri still has to come back into this team. So a fantastic uh, squad with four for Barcelona. And apart from the Pedri being injured, no other surprises. Time now to get into Xavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning, of course, he's asked a lot of questions in the media about the current state of the squad, the future of Cancelo and uh, Felix, his contract renewal, Victor Roque's huge injury news that broke last night. So let's go see what the gaff had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying that at the Olympic Stadium, we feel at home. The atmosphere that is being generated between the teams and the fans create a very good harmony. We have improved the level of players, those who have arrived and those who have grown in the past two years here. Our daily work is bearing fruit he was then asked about his renewal again the news broke a few days ago that his renewal is 100 percent completed and signed he signed until 2025 with the option of a further year if certain objectives are met and chavi did confirm my renewal is sealed and it will be official very very soon and he said he's very very happy so again Finally, Chai's renewal is officially done. He will commit until 2025, and again, there will be that option to extend it until 2026. Then as about Joao Felix, Joao Felix has been very good for us. He knows how to play between the lines. He knows how to play the ball easily. The whole team benefits from his arrival. This is about uh, competing every three days and going step by step. We have had two excellent games, and now the main objective is to maintain the level and play and get the result. There is no point in making any predictions. Being leaders in the league is always important, but right now we are not. We are two points behind Real Madrid, and if we win tomorrow it'll put some pressure on them and it is like that the most important thing more than the rivals is to have it in our own hands then as about Victor Roque's injuries in the way Victor Roque we are in contact Dr. Purnia is in contact with the Brazilian continuously and we're waiting to finally find out how he's doing we're following up on him as well like we do with all the lone players as well and he's then asked about the permanent signing of Joao Felix and Cancelo saying that it's too early to talk about the signing of Joao Felix let's see how the uh, how uh, things go he's happy he's helping us like Cancelo as well first we have to see how the season goes and hopefully to continue on this path I see it as complicated to continue for the next 15 years again he's asked if he be like let's throw Alex Ferguson or Barcelona and stay for essentially forever. This is Barcelona, it's always a roller coaster of sentations. I hope I can stay here for many years because Barcelona is my home, but for 15 years, and then he starts laughing. Look, keep in mind the longest serving manager for Barcelona is Johan Cruyff. I believe he did eight years, and the, we're talking, you know, the past 20 years, the longest serving manager is Pep for four years. So if he makes it past four years, I think that's already an achievement for Xavi. So we'll we'll see. I, I'm not expecting him to stay for the next 10 years unless he gets the results. Xavi can do by saying that it's very difficult to win titles in the league where there are rivals like Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and other very strong ones as well. So I'm not here to send any messages. Again, asked about Felix and Cancelo. There are, there are nine months left and it's a long time. We'll have to define and talk to their clubs as well. But right now, it is unthinkable to think about it at the moment. Again, signing them permanently. Then he was asked about his best moment as a Barcelona coach, of course, following his renewal, being essentially official by him. He said that I stick with the Spanish Book Cup uh, final in January against Real Madrid. Uh, he then asked about set pieces. Of course, we've improved a lot in set pieces this season. We scored from a corner kick uh, with the Kunde header against Osasuna. We scored a free kick as well. And Xavi said it's Sergio Allegri who's in charge of the free kick. We have gotten new takers like Joao Felix and Gundogan who can do it very well. We have improved and we are doing very well there are players who have played many minutes and others who are in excellent shape as well as not playing too much at a minimum we will try to rotate two players per game will take many circumstances into account when making these decisions very very interesting and i absolutely love it of course give players rest give players minutes again keep in mind kunde has played every single second of football so far this season for barcelona he is desperate for a rest and hopefully he does get rested for this match but again i love from chavi using a squad we didn't see this too much last season but now i think he trusts the squad a bit more i'm very very happy with that then he was asked on christensen saying look andreas christensen has some discomfort very minor but we want to wrote uh, we want to protect him he had discomfort in his achilles tendon but the other day he already played 90 minutes and he's at 100 percent he's a very very important player for the team then asked about Aroho coming back from injuries and look Aroho is a fundamental figure for us he's very important he's a leader he's a great conductor his spirit is key for the team and little by little he will come in and with him will have the feeling of maximum security I'm hoping that he'll be fully fit ready to go for the Porto match away we still have two games before then I think we have this match Mallorca I think we play Sevilla 
on the weekend. So three games for Idaho to get into the match. Hopefully he's starting against Sevilla. Then he'll start against uh, Porto away. I think that's the most important thing. Chad was then asked about the competition at the right wing position. Of course, you have Ferran Torres, uh, Rafinha, and Lemany Yamal. Saying, look, I'm delighted to have these players, Lemany Yamal, Ferran Torres, and Rafa. Whoever plays, they are showing a very high level. We demand a very high pressure and we need fresh players. And that is why there is a lot of rotation. And finally, Chad was asked on an injury update on the only injured player right now for Barcelona in Pedri. He said that, look, Pedri has good feelings. He's a necessary player. We want him to be in the best way possible when he returns. And he will be joining the squad very, very soon. And that concluded Xavi's press conference reaction had the match against Celta Vigo tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're going to start with the manager, of course, Xavi Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict his lineup. It's going to be very difficult to predict. Again, he's going to make two rotations. Could be more, could be less. Where he's going to do it? I have absolutely no idea, but I'm going to give my guess, and I have gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Cancelo, Koundé, Christensen, and Marcus Alonso. Midfield three of Romeo Gundogan and Gavi, and a front three of Ferran Torres, Lewandowski, and Juo Felix. I think, firstly, he'll make a rotation at right wing. I don't think Rafinha will start the match, even though Rafinha has been playing well. I think there had been a lot of rumors about the left back position, about Marcus Alonso coming in, and that kind of seems like a Chavi thing to do. I think Chavi will rest one of the full backs, and of course, someone in midfield I think will be rested as well, and I think it should be Frankie de Jong. I think Romeo will come back in, so who do you drop? Either Gundogan, Gavi, or de Jong, and I think he will drop de Jong, and Gavi got subbed off early on against Royal Antwerp. Gundogan didn't play uh, that much in the uh, Betis match, so he's fully fit, ready to go as well. And of course, Romeo didn't start that game, so I see a nice little rest for de Jong. Apart from that, I'd be very shocked if there's any other changes. I would even consider resting Lewandowski at this point. He has been playing a lot of minutes. We put Ferran at up top and another winger on the right-hand side. We're hearing that Cancelo is has some fatigue as well, so we could see him being rested. So a lot of options for Chavi to rest. I think a lot of players need rest. Uh, you know, I think, again, Conde probably starts this game, but I think he is absolutely desperate for some rest. And I also think Inogo Martinez is desperate some, for desperate for some minutes too. So I'll see, I think the most important thing in this match for me is that De Jong and Kunde get rest. If those two or one of them are rest, I'm absolutely happy. I think whatever the line of Chavi puts out in the end will get the job done. And that's not thing that Chavi Hernandez will select for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Chavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And of course, I have made a few changes from Chavi's lineup. I have gone with this lineup. On the screen right now, I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Cancelo, Christensen, Indigo Martinez, and Marcus Alonso. Midfield three of Romeo Gundogan and Gavi, and a front three of Rafinha, Ferran Torres, and Joao Felix. First thing, the midfield three is the exact same as uh, Chavi's midfield three. Again, I think resting De Jong is key. Gavi's on fire. Gundogan's playing well. Romeo got arrested, of course, against Royal Antwerp. That's set in stone. In the defense, like I said, I think Conde needs to be protected. And also, I want to see Inigo Martinez get a good run out. I think, again, Celta Vigo is his level. Inigo Martinez is a very, very good center back alongside Christensen. I think they can definitely get the job done. I have gone with uh, Alonso for Balde. I think Balde's played two back-to-back -back 90 minutes, although Cancelo was subbed off against Royal Antwerp. But I think, what, like? 80th minute honestly you can rotate either of them i'll be okay but the question is do i want either marcus alonso to start or sushi roberto i've i've edged it barely to marcus alonso finally the front three i have rested robert Lewandowski. again he's played a lot of minutes recently he hasn't even been subbed off i don't think um was he subbed off against betis i don't think he was i think he was subbed off the match before against um maybe also soon or something i don't know i think he was subbed off for one game but He's been playing so many minutes, and I've got with Ferran at the 9, Rafinha on the right, that way the, P the players at the right wing will be happy because they're starting the game, but of course, I think Joel Felix has to start, he's on absolute fire at the moment, and that's the line that I was like for this match, but of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you'd rather pick my lineup or Travis' lineup. Time now for my score prediction, what do I believe the result will be in this match? I think it will be a comfortable win for Barcelona, and I have gone with Barcelona winning this match by 2 goals to nil. Again, I think the most important thing is to keep the clean sheet, and if we do, I have no doubt that Barcelona will go on to win this match. Again, I think the 5-0 streak will come to an end. I don't think we'll win this match 5-0, although we could. I don't think so. I think South Vigo are a very, very good side, especially defensively, are very well coached. But if they do end up capitulating, it's definitely a possibility. And I have to stress this, and I have to very stress this at the beginning. If South Vigo score first, we are on the ropes. Again, we are at home, so again, there is that possibility of coming back. I understand that, but you cannot let Celta Vigo score first. If we, if we score 1-0, they bring it back to 1-1, okay, that's still manageable. But them scoring first, they will shut the shop down, 
and park that bus like no tomorrow. At the beginning of the game, they're going to be, of course, a bit open because they want to go and nick something, which is understandable. But my God, we have to score the first goal in this match. I think we get a goal early, like we did against um, Royal Antwerp. It'll be an absolute cruise of a game. But again, I still think Barcelona will win this match comfortably and hoping Xavi again sticks with the two natural wide players. If he does change into a four midfield, I will be less optimistic. But I think, again, Xavi has learned now and hopefully he does stick with those two natural uh, forwards on the uh, wings. And in the end, I do think Barcelona will win this match. And I have gone Barcelona win this match by two goals to nil. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what your score prediction will be. So that was a match preview for Barcelona versus Celta Vigo in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing, firstly, of course, is your score prediction. And secondly, on the lineups, first, would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? What do you think Chavi would go with? Who would he rotate? What would you rotate if you are the manager? Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come enjoy and watch the game with me. Follow through for the match, but match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Big game ahead. Nothing but the three points. Take care and force the Barca. <laughs>